Hi, book two. This is Greg from Coffee Slash Books. Happy Friday. Um, you'll notice I'm wearing a blazer. Um, I just watched Steve Partridge's video um, where he went off of, I think, on the Stoops video. I'm sorry if I got that name wrong, um, about wearing a blazer. Um, and they did a hashtag <laughs> booktube blazers and blazers for booktube. And I decided I should wear one making a video tonight. It looks kind of weird, like I'm going to a discotheque or something, but whatever. So that's why I'm wearing a blazer. Um, I'll put the hashtag below just for fun to see if anyone else is going to do it too. Um, I just want to say thanks for everyone who's been so supportive. Uh, I've only joined BookTube like a few days ago and I already got lots of awesome comments and feedback and subscribers. So thank you so much. I hope we can keep going and doing this. Um, so I mentioned in my last video that I was going to talk about Andre Kortogov, um, which is what I'm going to do today. So he is a Ukrainian novelist who writes in Russian. Um, he's written 19 novels and nine children's books, I think, while he was in the army years ago. Um, most of his work is black humor. humor. Um, it focuses on post-Soviet reality and also elements of surrealism. Um, so the first book that I read from him was Death and the Penguin. Um, it was written in Russian in 1996 and translated to English in 2001. Um, so it's not very contemporary. Um, maybe some of you are looking for more contemporary stuff, but I say why not? It's this millennium, so let's talk about it. <laughs> um, so it's about a guy named Victor who's a writer and he's struggling um, to live in a post-Soviet society. Um, but he ends up getting a job writing obituaries for a local newspaper. <laughs> Uh, all this time, he has a pet penguin named Misha, who is kind of always there with him. He follows him from room to room. It's like kind of like an, uh, a guy and his dog relationship. And the reason why he has Misha the penguin is because the zoo was having financial troubles and was um, letting people adopt animals out of the zoo, and he got a penguin. So if you can just picture a guy with a penguin living in, in Kiev, which is a, you know the capital of Ukraine, um, it's kind of interesting. While I was reading it, I was wondering if the penguin was real, or was it his imagination, or was it like supposed to be a dog or a cat or something, but other characters in the book um, interact with the penguin, um, they're not really weirded out by it, it's almost like it's normal, which kind of plays into surrealism, so I thought that was good. Um, so Misha the penguin gets sick, and... Andre, uh, the character Victor um, tries to find ways to get him better, of course. And in the end, um, he makes arrangements to have the penguin sent back to Antarctica so it can live in its natural environment. And at the very end of the story, instead, Victor uh, flees to Antarctica. He gets He's boarding the plane that's going to take him there and is leaving the penguin behind. Um, probably I didn't mention this. Um, he finds out that the obituaries he was writing are actually a hit list for the Mafia. Um, he was writing these obituaries, and then those people, um, within a few days, ended up being killed. So, the reason why he flees is because um, he needs to escape the Mafia. So, I think it's a really interesting story, because it kind of depicts um, contemporary Ukraine, um, and a lot of situations that happen in the city, at least how I remember it. And I was there um, in the mid-2000s, mid late, late to 2008. Um, and it's about a man and his pet, Penguin, just getting, in, uh, not understanding situations that they get themselves into. So I think it's a relatable story, minus maybe the Penguin for most of us. Um, it's also written, I, I read it in English. I don't know how it's written in Russian. I think the translation in English is very good. It's very simple, so if anyone is not um, a native English speaker, I think they could definitely enjoy, still enjoy the book in English. Um, yeah, so I definitely recommend Andre Korkov. And another book, I bought these two together. I just went into a bookstore and just found these in the English section and just was like, okay. Like I said before, that's how I pick out most of my books. <laughs> um, this is The Gardener from Achakov. I don't know if it's Achakov or Achakov. Um, this was published after Death and the Penguin, and it's about a young guy, kind of like a young, lazy, 20-something guy in Kiev, Ukraine, um, and he 
wants to go to a party with his friends, a costume party, and he gets an old Soviet policeman's uniform, and everyone's, you know, taking pictures and thinking it's so cool, you know, this nostalgia from the 1950s, and it ends up transferring him back to Kiev in 1957, so the book goes back and forth between um, him going to Kiev in 1957, which was kind of like a dark and mysterious time, and him coming back to um, contemporary Ukraine. So he does go back and forth, and when he puts on the uniform, he's conscious about what's about to happen. Kind of like time travel. Um, so I definitely recommend this book as well. It also depicts the same um, elements of contemporary Ukraine. And personally, I think uh, Ukrainian literature is very underrepresented in European and maybe American um, readership. Uh, either because maybe stuff's not translated to English often and translated well, or I don't know. So I'm always pro um, reading things that maybe other people have never heard of or they're very popular. So that's what I wanted to talk about Andrei Korkov today. Um, if you've read anything from him, please uh, let me know in the comments below and we can talk about it. Um, if you also have any other um, recommendations that you think I should read, please let me know. And it's Friday night here in Moscow. I hope you all have a fun and exciting weekend. I will be working on my dissertation, possibly going to work tomorrow and doing laundry. So, um, and of course reading. So not very exciting from my end, but it's what I really want to do. <laughs> so um, thanks so much for watching and have a good day.